Welcome to the first in a series of videos on optimization. A quick note before I begin. Um, these are not quite the same as our previous videos in that I'm not going to be focusing as much on mathematics. As such, I have titled the video Code for Game Development. There will still be math though. If you watch these videos because you like math, there's plenty of math here. Uh, it's just going to be in support of the work we're going to be doing on optimization uh, instead of being the main point here. So let's get started. Usually I start with um, with a motivating example and today will be no different. The, motiv the motivating example is that your game runs slow. I think we can classify game developers into one of two categories. Those who have run into um, situations where their game doesn't run as fast as they would like and programmers who will eventually <laughs> they just haven't been working on games long enough so I feel like this is a pretty universal situation that game developers get into and it can be uh, broken up into two main categories of ways it, that your game can run too slow and the first one is load times the game takes too long to load maybe you have to load too many textures from the hard drive, models, sounds, maybe the story for your game is like a 200,000 page novel or something, you have to load all those words, I don't know. And the second way is the frame rate. And uh, if, you're, if your game takes too long with either of these things, your players will be not happy. And we want to keep our players happy, so uh, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that if you don't care about optimization, that is incorrect. You should very much care about optimization. Maybe this is just me being a little bit preachy, but uh, I think optimization is a serious topic. And before we get to it, let's play the devil's advocate here a little bit and, and talk about some things that I hear sometimes um, about optimization that are not true. And the first one is... Processors are getting faster all the time. Uh, so if you if you chart, if you put in a chart, this is pretty much the mathiest we're going to get in this video, is drawing a chart where on the x uh, axis is, is years, okay, and on the y axis is speed of the of the, of the processors generally available on the market, you can see we have a nice upward curve here. Processors are so incredibly fast these days, it's mind boggling, it's amazing. And while that is true, the same is not true for memory. Memory is very much not getting faster. Memory looks like this. It's, I mean, it does get faster, but only very slowly. The speed that processors have been increasing has vastly outstripped the speed that memory has been increasing. And this is important because every bit of data that goes through that processor has to be stored in that memory. And so the memory these days in 2014, it's still 2014 for another 20 days. <laughs> in 2014, the memory is a serious bottleneck. Moreover, it's not even true that processors are getting faster because this graph only goes to 2003. I know some people have already written in the comments how that's not true. I know I was getting to that part. After 2003, the graph looks like this. It's completely flat. So processors are not getting faster at all. The reason is that we've made processors so fast that the power requirements of these processors are so much that if they get any faster, we will melt the the processor. We can't. We're we're pulling too much power, and things are getting too hot, and and we literally cannot make processors any faster according to the laws of physics. So if processors are not getting faster, then if you want your game to have better graphics, and do cooler things, then you have to optimize your game. Okay. Another thing you will hear, which is a counter argument, again, we're playing the devil's advocate, is that compilers can optimize, can optimize. 
people will say the compiler can optimize better than I can. And so why should I buy it is after all an optimizing compiler. And while that is true, the compiler does exactly what you tell it to do. No more, no less. In fact, it is more limited by the things that you type into your computer than, than it is enabled by them. It can't read your mind. The things that that are the information that is necessary to make a program really fast is in your brain and the compiler has no access to it. So this is I think a very important point that I'm going to write big. Compilers are only a tool. They're a tool that you're going to use to make your video game. They can't make your game brilliantly fast without work from your brain and in the next few videos we're going to be examining uh, methods that your brain can use to make better optimizations than a compiler is capable of which I think is cool. Alright. Lastly something that you hear is well I've I've already done enough it's an M and uh, maybe people will say this game really doesn't need that much optimization because um, it's already pretty fast or maybe I've put a bunch of work into it and I don't think it really needs a little bit of work and the answer to that is no you have not. There is always, always, always another optimization to be found. In fact, the word optimized, I'm not sure I really like very much because there's, it implicitly says that there, there is an optimal, an optimal state of the program that it can get no faster than this optimal state. And that's really just not true. Um, and as an example of this, I have a, a story that I like to tell. I was working on a, a, a program a few months ago, and I was working all day on this procedure to get it fast, because it was a core part of the program. It needed to be very fast. And um, I had put a lot of work into it, and I thought I had I, I, I cut out something like 20% of the, of the running time of this procedure. I thought that was pretty good. And then I... A colleague of mine gave me a, a replacement that he had been working on of the procedure and his optimization was something like five times faster and why was that because the assumptions that I had made of, of how I should write this code led me to make a certain series of optimizations but my coworker came from at it from a completely different perspective and so he was able to make all sorts of optimizations that I hadn't even thought of. So th there's always a better way to optimize your program. The real question is, what is the cost-benefit analysis? How much work is it to implement this optimization? And when it's done, how much benefit will you get out of it? How much more complex will it make the code? Is it really worth it to do? That's the real question when talking about optimizations. And that I can't really get into these videos. That's up to you to decide. So. That's it for this week. Next week we are going to get into the very critical topic of how to memorize, uh, I'm sorry, how to measure the performance of your program. See you next week.